<laughs> um, all right. So hi, everybody. Oop, let me close this back in. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Natasha Vasandani, and I'm a data scientist with White Ops, uh, focusing on the detection of our new application integrity products. Um, I'm going to give you a quick demo of our product, but I also first wanted to provide a brief background on our detection. So as you may have already heard, our mission is to protect the integrity of the internet and we want to protect it at scale. We observe over 1 billion events per day and collect 2,500 signals per event, which is constantly feeding into our research for bot detection. Um, leveraging this vast amount of data, we are able to design a high precision, so low false positive protection against applications um, for account logins, account takeovers, payment transactions, and other human interactions. So what you see in the middle here is uh, representing the layers of detection that we use to make a bot detection. At the very base, we use technical evidence. So network signals, JavaScript signals, and native signals, rather than being, rather than only being able to detect a bot uh, by observing an IP address that's uh, attempting to log in 100 times in one minute, we can actually use the technical evidence to block that bot from its very first login attempt. On top of that, we use machine learning for anomaly detection and identifying abnormal behaviors, as well as threat intelligence led by Jonathan Tomek, who presented to you earlier today, to strengthen our algorithms and classify each event in real time. So I'm going to go over to the next slide. So this slide is a diagram showing you the flow of a request for a customer with the implementation of our real-time protection. When a user visits a customer site, you can see over here on the left, um, White Ops will gather signals and place it through their detection engine. That engine uses our mitigation API to respond to the customer with a decision of whether the session was essentially a bot or not. The customer then has the ability to react in real time, whether they want to block the request, allow the request, add additional authentication, or even deceive the request. And then that data is also sent into a dashboard and reporting flat files for the customer to view their activity over time. So what I'm going to do next is, for the next eight minutes, I guess, is um, actually show, demonstrate this type of process for you. So I'm going to pull up Okay, so this, what you see on my screen here on the left is a fake customer that we have called Adaraxi Books that sells books online. And they um, want to protect their site from, and their, protect their inventory and their users from bots. What you see here, this terminal on the right, um, this, what I'm going to show are the logs that'll show, essentially show the communication between Adaraxi's book servers and our mitigation API. So you'll see it responding in real time, trying to detect whether or not that session was a bot or not. So to give you an example, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and tail the logs. So I'm gonna just log in as a human. And when I hit log in, what you see here on um, the right, I'm gonna highlight this block for you. So this that I highlighted is what the customer at Araxi Books is sending our API with um, our encrypted signals that we collected as well as some additional, some additional um, data points that they might want us to report on. And what you see here on the bottom that I've just highlighted by peer response, this is the response that the API is giving the customer. So this allows the customer to take that response, stream it to their SIMs, um, do their own analytics on it as well, put it up in their own internal dashboards. The next one that I'm gonna show you is, um, hold up. So I have some code over here. Um, what I've done is just written a really simple sel Selenium bot. Um, you can pass it a flat file of a ton of usernames and passwords. You can pass it some proxy. IP addresses, a bunch of user agents for it to rotate through. Just have it iterate through all of that and keep logging in. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when I do that. So if I do pass in the username, uh, the same one, we can do the same one that we did last time, human test Natasha, password, I am human. And let's just say I wanted to iterate through three times. So I'm going to hit enter and you'll watch the bot start running. And what you see here on the right is every time a session happens, the information is being sent to our API and we're responding, hey, this is a bot. 
So that has been completed. Um, the final bot that I actually wanted to show you was, or is a curl script. This is a very common type of bot where the user is just going to be attacking the customer's API rather than going to the browser directly. So in this case, we are essentially protecting their API from abuse. So here, um, if I run this same one, but I run the curl script instead, so it's not going to go to the browser. Password, human. You won't see anything happen, but what you saw here was the, the uh, request that the customer sent to our API and our API responding saying, you need to block this in real time. So that is actually the extent of the demonstration. And um, I know I only have about four minutes left over here. So I wanted to see if anybody had any questions. Actually, I, I do. Uh, first of all, uh, Natasha, that, that was very impressive. Um, the one thing that was that, that I would have liked to have seen, and maybe you can uh, spend a few minutes explaining is, what, what does the alert look like on the customer side? Is it, are you interacting with, with a SIM product, as you may have mentioned, or are there other um, alerts, you know, that, that, that the customer would receive? Um, and we're, I guess we're assuming that the customer has a, you know, a SOC in place uh, so that the live alerts are actually being fielded by, by a human. But uh, can you address that a little bit? Yeah, um, so I might not be able to get into too much of the uh, technical details, but what I can say is, so we're sending this response back, this response back, and it, what it has in it is it has a, an action, and a lot of times this, this is actually configurable by the customer. So if they want, um, if, it's a cert, if the result is a certain type of bot, they want to react differently, they can tell us what they want in the action spot. It tells you whether or not it's a bot, and then it gives some sort of reason codes as to why we believe it is a bot or why we believe it's suspicious. Um, from there, the customer has the ability to stream it to any of their sims, how, however, however they want to set it up, or we can, we can set it up to stream to some, one of their sims. And uh, how, how frequent would you say on average, you know, will a enterprise be fielding, you know, these, uh, uh, these attempts by bots to log in as an employee or log in as a customer or log in, and, you know, in some way? Yeah, um, I w it's, it's very, very frequent. Account takeover and account logins are very common. And given the amount of open source bot tools there are and just how easy it is, I mean, you can, you can do it with very, very little code. You get access to a, a set of usernames and passwords. Uh, what an actor will typically do is find a site known to not have that well of security, iterate through those usernames and passwords with the click of a button, somewhat like you just saw me present that, um, and have it return any, any usernames and passwords that were successful. From there, they now know which usernames and passwords work, and then they can go and actually use that on a more secure site. Um, this, this happens all the time, and you probably hear of a lot of data breaches that are occurring. I, I'd say it's, it's a lot more common than we think it is. And, and this is, uh, so, so this is one of the first lines of defense for an enterprise um, to catch an attempt to, to at a breach. Um, sooner, you know, much sooner rather than, rather than later. And uh, is, it, is there a size of, do you, does, is the product recommended for small to medium sized businesses or, uh, or more for enterprise companies? So um, we, we're going to go with both. Um, we actually, uh, I, in one of the slides I presented, we handle a lot, we're able to handle a lot of data. And initially we were an ads integrity company only where we were, we're dealing with over a billion events per day already with ads. So um, one of the, one of, I guess one of our big advantages is the fact that we're able to handle at scale and we're able to deal with a ton of transactions. And so we are, we are catering, to, catering towards all types of businesses regardless of the size. 
Well, that's, uh, it's, it's very impressive. And I appreciate uh, that White Ops uh, sponsored our event today. And uh, you guys, you, both you and Jonathan did a great job. We're gonna, we're recording uh, the demo for uh, playback later for people that weren't able to attend today. And um, we have your contact information. Uh, so thanks very much, Natasha. I, I appreciate your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much.